morning and all that good stuff. Welcome to another week on RTO. As usual, it's dark and gloomy here in Northampton, um, but we're going to warm up the day with a viewer's request to start us off this week, an album ranking uh, the band called The Shaker. Now, Call The Shaker of a psychedelic rock man band um, fronted by Christian Crispin Mules even. Um, they were big in the uh, 90s and they were really successful between 96 and 99. They're sort of known for this in, in, in traditional Indian music um, with culture and mysticism and with rock. Um, the name actually comes from uh, a king called King Kula Shakara from the 9th century. Um, they disbanded in 1990 but reformed in 2004, made a few albums. Um, they're a sort of a band that I'm not overly into, but... I do like them if you get my drift. You know, they've created some really good stuff. But to, when I, I was asked to um, rank these albums, I'd heard tracks by these that I'd never heard. And I was quite impressed. Um, uh, they've released um, six albums. So we'll have a look at these six albums. So, coming in at number six, we go to the third album. That was released in 2006. Well, 2007, sorry. One year out. I forgot to put it, but I knew I'd got it in the notes. So, yeah, it came out in 2007. Uh, this is their first album since they reformed. Um, in the band at the time were Alonzo Bevan on bass, vocals and acoustic guitar. Paul Winterhart on the drums. Um... Crispian Mills on lead vocals, guitar and harmonica, and Harry B. Broadbent piano and organ and vocals. So the first track on the album is called Out on the Highway. Nothing wrong with this one, very solid. Some nice guitar work here. Uh, it's really got that psychedelic feel to it, pretty good. Um, second si Sight, another really good track. It's not it doesn't hit you in the face and go, wow, but it's nice, it's pleasant, and it's got a nice rhythm to it. I like that. Let me get my favourite track on this one. It's called Die for Love. Very 60s, but what really makes this good is the Hammond organ and the guitars. They really work well together. It is a great track. Then we get Great Dictator of the Free World. Um, it's okay. Not a particular favourite of mine, I'm afraid. I don't skip it, I've not, didn't skip over it, but uh, it's one that I'm not very keen on. There's just something about it. Then we get Strange Folk. This is one of these weird little tracks, speaking, um, whispering type thing. Reminds me a bit of Gong. It's all right. Song of Love. The keyboards and the drumming are pretty good. Um, like this uh, quite a lot. And then it goes into a track called Nyarara. Uh, it's a bit lackluster in places, although there is a nice piece of drumming in this. Um, Shadowlands. It's okay, but it needs a little bit more beef. A little bit more bass in there would have made it an even better track. Fool That I Am. Very hippie sort of keyboards and uh, really good. I like that. The Hammond organ really enriches this track. Hurricane Season, a little bit um, monotone here, it doesn't do anything for me. Old Jack Tar, bit of a filler track for me, it doesn't doesn't serve a purpose on here. Six Foot Down Blues, I love the riff on this, it's a bluesy riff with a great bass line. Then we get Dr. Kit, it's a very psychedelic track and I quite like that, I like the psychedelia sort of side of this band. And then we got Persone. Um, bit of a filler track here. It's not the best track on the album. And that was the last track on the album. Well, this album 
it's one of them over albums. It is good, don't get me wrong, but it isn't brilliant. I be just prefer the others better. I do like listening to this one. I must admit it was a good listen. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7 out of 10. Okay then, coming in at number 5, we have their most current album that was released last year, in 2022. And it's their 6th album, and it's called The First Con Congregational Church of Eternal Love and Free Hugs. A mouthful there. Um, on here we've got... Crispian and Mills on the lead vocals and guitars, tambura and harmonica, Alzon, 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 Alzonzo Bevan, sorry I couldn't get my tongue around that, um, on the bass, Paul Winterhart on drums, Jay Darlington on keyboards and Mellotron and Harry Broadbent on the keyboards. This is a quite a little sort of a conceptual thing, so... We get this intro called Dearly Beloved. Now, as it says in the title, it's a priest doing some preaching. It's quite funny towards the end. Uh, you've got to listen to it because it is quite funny. Then it goes into a track called What It Is, I'm Against It. Opening riff is pretty good. Some great drumming here from Paul Winterheart. Pretty good track. Then we get a thing called Hometown. This is a very catchy tune. I think... The, uh, this track is they should have been in the 60s this band without a doubt uh, this is very 60s, it's a fantastic track um, Burning Down another little quirky track um, bit, nice arrangement it's got a bit more acoustic but very good, Loving Separation this one's alright it's got some nice guitar in this one um, it's one of these 60 ballads something like you know, Sandy Shaw or Mary Hopkin would have sang really good um, then we get Skew Let Us Pray, Back to the Priest. you got kids coughing <laughs> and also, you know, uh, it reminds me of, um, tell you, he's sort of telling the children off. And if you've ever remembered listening to a thing that Joyce Grenfell did about the school, and she's the teacher, very similar to that. It's really, really good. Then we get a brilliant track called Gingerbread Man, uh, straight out of 1968. Uh, it's got that early Pink Floyd, Sid Barrett sort of thing to it. It is really good. Um, then we get Farewell, A Beautiful Dreamer. A great track. Got some bit strobesy. Nothing wrong with that. Great guitar solo in there from Crispian. Really good. Then we get Where Have All the Brave Knights Gone. Some nice harmonies in this. Really strong track. Then we go back to the... Uh, to the priest and this is raining like it's a bit comedy uh there's lead missing off the roof and the wind all when rain's coming into the church it's quite funny then we got 108 ways to leave your narcissist oh <laughs> interesting oh this is so beatles but it's good it's really good then we get after the fall part one very psychedelic rock for the 21st Century, very good. Don't Forsake Me, probably the heaviest track on the album. Got some really good riffs in that. Then we get 303 re Revisited. This one's a little bit out there, but it's a bit of a filler track. Once, The Once and Future King. It's alright, it's got a nice solo on it. Shattered Bones. This is getting to the stage where there's too many tracks on this album. Ah, it doesn't really do anything for me. Let me get After the Falls, part two and three. To be quite honest, they should have just put this After the Fall together. Um, it's a really good track, I don't mind it. Then we got the closing words, so we're back to our vicar. It's quite good. Uh, then we get Bumblebee. This isn't too bad, it's very 60s pop. Then we get this thing about <laughs> from the church notices about a cinema club showing religious films I don't know what that's on there for on the whole I think this is a really good album I like the concept I love the um, bits with the priest in the church they're very funny but there are too many tracks on this but the majority of the album is pretty good so I am going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7.5 Okay then, coming in at number four, we've got that second album. 
um, from 1999, and it's called Peasants, Pigs and Astronauts. So on here is Alonza Bevan on the bass again, Paul Winterhart on drums, Jay Darlington on the Hamel, the organ, Wurlitzer, electric piano, and various types of keyboards. Crispian Mills on the vocals and guitars. We've got some additional magicians on here, the uh, Mighty Horner Sawman and um, Graham Patterson on loops and soundscapes. First track is called Great Hosanna. The start of this is fantastic. It's dramatic and then it just fades into a bit of an anti-climax. It's not what I was expecting. I was still expecting more grandeur, but there isn't. Then Mystic Machine Gun. God, this is brilliant. Best track on the album. I'll, it's very early Pink Floyd again. Some great guitar textures on here. And the drum drumming here from uh, Paul Winterheart is pretty good. Let me get a track called SOS. It's got a bit of that sort of Mission Impossible theme to it in places. I love the keyboard and organ. Great riffs as well. Raddy Raddy. This is a traditional Indian song, uh, apparently. Um, and they've sort of jazzed it up, but it's got that base of Indian traditional music and it's really pleasant. I quite like that. I'm still here. This is a really nice acoustic number with some nice a nice vocal from Crispin uh Crispian. Really, really good. Um Let me get Shower Your Love. I love this song. It's just so sixties. Uh, it's got that really vibe to it. Fantastic little track. 108 Battles of the mind a good track again certainly got that 60s groove which i really do like sound of drums some really nice harmonies love the organ on this uh really good um time worm again we're going back into that more cultural indian sound really good last fell well it's okay it's got a good solo in it though really good um, Golden Av Aviator, another really good track here. Um, bit the uh, Beatles again, but there's nothing wrong with that. Then we get a thing. Then I'll, I'll get this right wrong. I do apologise. Namia Nanda Nandana. It's another one of these Indian, Indian sort of cultural songs, traditional song. It's not bad in places, but it goes on a little bit. Then we get this um, little hidden track at the end. Uh, it's called Stratora. Again, it's traditional Indian music. Um, but sometimes when I've heard this, uh, you know, when they sing, it sounds like them, whoever's singing it is in a bit of pain. It's a bit whaley. <laughs> and I'm no offence, but I know it's the way it is, but it's, you know, to someone, you know, some people, it sounds like they're wailing. That's the end of the album. Um, another solid album. It's got some really good stuff on this. Um, quite like listening to this one, so I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 7.6. Okay then, coming in at number 3, we got another fourth album, and it was released in 2010, Pilgrim's Progress. So it is Crispian Mills, Alonzo Bevan, Paul Weinhart, and Harry Broadrent. Got some additional people on here. We've got Audrey Evans doing backing vocals, Christian Gerard on the cello, Hamshi Gwashwami on tabla, and Vijay Krishna on tabla. First track is called Peter Pan, R.I.P. I think without the strings, this would be a pretty shallow track, but the strings, and especially the cello, really adds to this track. And then we get Orphelia, very atmospheric, atmospheric, track um I got some really gentle guitar um keyboard sorry good vocal it's quite atmospheric and ambient like that track modern blues now at the start of this it's got one of the indian dialects i didn't know what it was so i asked mastermind dave who's a man that's traveled the world and he he said it's definitely from india but he's not sure what dialect it is. 
<laughs> you know, he's a man of many talents. Is half Dave. Um, it sounds a little bit like Gloria in places as well. So yeah, it's pretty good. Um, Only Love, probably the one track on this album that I'm not very keen on. Although it has got a fantastic guitar solo on it. All Dressed Up and Ready to Fall in Love. Interesting track. This is one of these, I call it a fusion track. It's got an English folk sort of melody with um, an Indian sort of drum with tambolas. Tambolas, whatever they're called. Um, mixture. And it works. It's a really good track. Then we get Carvery. Uh, it's a very gentle track with some nice little organ overtones on it. Ruby is another of those gentle rock tracks. Lots of textures, which is really good. Figure it out. It's got some gentle stuff, but a nice bass line to it as well. Really good. Barbarella, really like this track. A lot of drumming on it and cowbells. Really good. When a Brave Needs a Maid. Very interesting track. You've got a, a drum that's very Native American Indian. And then you've got this sort of Russian feel to it. It really works. I love this. Um, to Wait Till Comper. One of the tracks I'm not very keen on. Then we get um, Winter's Call. It just goes on a little bit too bit, about two minutes. The rest of it is good. The bit in the middle, though, is a church organ. It really lifts the track, but it's got a good guitar solo. Um, pretty good album from top to bottom here. Um, there are one or two little bits that are... Um, a bit iffy but the last track is track to me is the best track on the album and it's a masterpiece so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 7.8 okay then coming in number two we got the fifth album this was released in 2016 and it's called K2O on here it's Crispian Mills, Alonza Bevan, Paul Weinart, and Harry Broadbent. Um, not many people been in this band, which is pretty good. They've got a consistent lineup. And the first track on this one is called Infinite Sun. Certainly got that subcontinental feel to it. Uh, and then you get some sort of rocky overtones with some nice guitar work. Pretty solid track that one is. Um, Holy Flame, I love the bass line on this from Alonso. Very, very good. Um, really drives the song along. Um, Death of Democracy, I love the start of this. You've got some organs, some guitars. And then you get this Celtic drum, but it's not Celtic. But it's really, really good. Let the love be with you. This is great. It's got a jazzy feel to it. The piano work reminds me of something from Dave Brubeck. Really, really good. Then we got Here Comes My Demons. This is my favourite track on here, and it's probably one of my favourite tracks by this band. It starts off with this chant with some acoustic guitar, and then the beat comes in. It's just got a hook to it. It's very gentle keyboards and very psychedelic. It is a fantastic track. Um, 33 Crows. This is more of a busker sort of trap track. I like the um, drumming. It really gets your feet tapping. A little bit of organ. Lovely. Oh Mary, the start of this is really interesting. It's got lots of textures. It's a good rocking track. Like that one. High Noon. Great guitar work here. Atmospheric. Reminds me of Wicked Games, Chris Isaac, this one. Really good. Then we get Harry Ball, which is the sweetest thing. Very short chat, but atmospheric. Get right, get get right, get ready. The opening riff is absolutely great. I love the funky guitar in this one. Um, Mountain Lifter. Some more really strong guitar work on this one. It's a nice different sort of arrangement. The drumming is really deep and aggressive as well. Really, really strong track. Um, not a bad track on this one. It's a great 
album. Different sorts of textures and sounds and moods. And it is really good. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8 out of 10. So the number one album for me by this band. And it's an album that I have got a copy of. Um, well, I had a copy of it. That I put onto a CD. So, <laughs> And it's their debut album from 1996. And it's just basically called K. It's um, Crispian Mills, Alonzo Bevan, Paul Weinhart, Jay Darlington. And then we've got some guest of music musicians on this. And we've got Rajat Khan on Sarod, Ushumi Gosami on the tablet, Gori Chandori on backing vocals, and the kick horns on start all over. First track on here is called Hey Dude. The drumming starts, it's so psychedelic, it's brilliant. And being from the 90s, it was really good. It sounds like it should be more in 1967 than 1996, but it is brilliant. Night of the Town, absolutely amazing. Uh, an atmospheric, some strong riffs, great vocal from Crispian. Really good track. The Temple of the Everlasting uh, Light. Very catchy tune. I love the keyboards. It just enriches this song. Um Govinda, probably their best ever track. Um, and what I like about this, the mixture of the traditional subcontinent cultural music and then throwing some rock and some great riffs in it. Uh, the guitar work is brilliant and I love this track. Smart Dogs, again another fantastic track. Um, psychedelic rock brought right up into the 1990s solid track magic theater and a really atmospheric track nice piano work and keyboards very eerie love them sort of tracks into the deep again there's just something about this album it's about 20 years behind it it should have this is as definitely as an album that's very 60s psychedelic rock and I love it brilliant stuff then we get Sleeping Jeeva again we've got the cultural of the subcontinent in here mixed with psychedelia and rock it just really does work then Tatava another sterling track some nice vocals love the guitar one of the best songs on the album then we get Grateful When You're Dead and Jerry Was There. I think this is all about Jerry Cantrell from the Grateful Dead. Certainly had an influence on this band. You can tell it in there, some of their songs. You've got a great use of tabla drums, a little bit psychedelic, a bit proggy as well. Super track. Then we get 303, brilliant track. Love the guitar work on this. Just a great rock track. Then Start All Over. Fantastic work, fantastic guitar solo. Hollow Man Parts 1 and 2. This song has got so many elements of different bands. Pink Floyd, Beatles, bit the Grateful Dead in there. The, this is a song that's got all their influences on. And then you get these bits of the Ingu in Indian language. The song is... One of these weird ones, it sort of 19 minutes long, but there's only six minutes of actually hearing stuff. It sort of is, take all the silence out, it's a really good track, but I don't know why they sort of lingered it out, it sort of spoils it a little bit. Um, I don't know what they were trying to achieve there, but um, it sort of, makes the track a bit things but so what I did I took the track edited it and took all the silence out and put it together as a, as a whole track without the silence and I'll tell you what do it like that and it's much better and that's how I got it on my iPod I took all the silence out but you know I don't know what they were thinking but the bits that are in there are really good okay this is back in 96 rock music again was going through such a low place for me this come out 
I heard bits on the radio. I thought, this is good. And when I listened to it, I thought, got it out at the library of all places. Give it a listen. And I thought, well, this is pretty good. It is a great album. And um, I do sort of like listening to this one. And I think it was a breath of fresh air for 1996. So I'm going to give this album an RTO ranking of 8.6. So there we go. A um, bit of Call the Shaker. Um, a band that, as I said, you know, I don't have much of their stuff. But what I have got, I really enjoy, especially this album, K. Okay, that's all for this one. Um, I'll be back later, and it's a classic album, and we're going to look at Mott the Hoople's or The Young Dudes. Got a very Northampton connection as this band. So I'm looking forward to that one. So I will see you for that later. Bye for now. <laughs>